starting with stage one of killer focaccia or over the top focaccia and the process is as I explained in, in the recipe is creating a pre-ferment so the pre-ferment is, is a portion of the dough which is fermented beforehand fermentation is the basis of your flavor as well as improving dough consistency and we can talk about that later especially when we get into the further stages of the focaccia so what goes into a, a pre-ferment this is a basic pre-ferment called a pouliche French word meaning the Polish method of baking I have one and three quarters cups of water here I am going to add a quarter cup of spelt flour. Now I like to add spelt flour, one because it's maybe that's a little bit more than a quarter cup. I like spelt flour because, and this is whole grain spelt flour, one because it's got a good flavor. I like the additional color it gives the dough, but most importantly, it is a whole grain flour, it's full of nutrients. It's got all the vitamins, minerals, um, essential oils, and bacteria, and we're putting bacteria in here. Bacteria are essentially our life forms, and life forms need nutrition. We'll add sugar, but they also like all the nutrients. They like the, phyto, the minerals, the phytonutrients. They like everything in whole grain, just like the human body does, and that's why nutritionists and dietitians stress eating whole grains these days. So, I have almost two cups of liquid, liquid in there, so there's you know, this is a one-to-one -one ratio, so there's one cup of flour, spelt and white. I'm using uh, King Arthur bread flour. It's, uh, make sure you use bread flour. Bread flour has the correct amount of protein in it to give you a, create a, a nice, airy, artisan-style bread. If you use all-purpose flour, it's not going to work. Okay, cup number two. Now, we've got whole grain flour in there for some of the nutrition, but the yeast in particular likes simple sugar, so I'm going to add a tablespoon of um, sugar. You can use um, brown sugar if you like. You can use honey, There's, and you can probably go with no sugar. Uh, it just it makes it a lot easier if you, uh, the yeast activates better when there's some sugar available. Now, I'm putting in an package of yeast. Package of yeast is in there. Now the secret ingredient. The Connie bread drink from Germany. This is my insight is that we started buying the Connie bread drink in the Dr. Cracker Bakery to use it as a sourdough starter. I've been to the Connie factory in Germany, and it's actually a huge bakery, uh, a biodynamic bakery, I believe. And what the Connie folks do is to make this bread drink is they create a sourdough and then extract the bread drink from the sourdough. So this is the actual, these are the bacteria, the lactobacillus, a lot of lactobacillus brevis that are in an active sourdough. When you take bacteria away from its feeding medium, like in this case it would be the, um, the flour, then it, it becomes inactive. The pH is, arrives at a state at which the bacteria no longer f do their fermentation, no longer reproduce, they go into uh, stasis or hibernation. But what we're, we're going to do is reactivate them. And we're going to do that with flour. Now I'm going to add a quarter cup of bread drink. There we go. Now we've worked with the Connie bread drink at Dr. Cracker in Dallas and to create a sourdough cracker. We've never actually brought the sourdough cracker into the marketplace. We liked the flavor, but it just wasn't distinct enough that we could differentiate it from our other flavors. But all we did is we took some Connie bread drink, mixed it in with um, our whole grain flours, let it sit overnight, and we had, poof, we had a wonderful sourdough, very active, very lively. So I've got uh, yeast in here, I've got a little bit of sugar for feeding the yeast, I've got the Connie bread drink, 
and I've got the flour. And all this is, is I just mix it together. It's essentially a batter. It's not going to do anything other than mix and then sit for anywhere from five to six hours. You can see there's no, the, the dough doesn't, no gluten strands have formed. It's not holding together in any way. The best way to describe it is it's like a pancake batter. So that's mixed. Now I'm not going to do anything else and we'll see, we'll come back to this over the course of this baking lesson. You'll be able to see that it's gone from something with no integrity, no real texture to, to a, a, a well-defined texture. So that's it. I let that sit. I'm going to just take any sort of plastic bag that I have in my recycling and cover it up. Protect it. Doesn't have to be tight. Air doesn't hurt it. That's it. Pre-ferment has been sitting for an hour and 20 minutes. So we're going to take a look and see what um, transformation has happened. This is, remember, we're just taking simple ingredients, flour, water, and yeast, mixing them together and creating a living organism. We had kind of a sloppy, it almost looked like a pancake batter. And la voila, you can see it started to rise up. You can see I actually didn't mix this very well at all. I should have blended my flour better. You can see some dark patches, which is the spelt flour. But you see it's, if you remember, it just kind of like fell apart when I lifted it up. Now you can see it's gathering texture. You can see the gluten strands are starting to form. They're holding together. So I'm just going to smooth it down a little bit. No reason to really disturb it. And it's getting a nice domed uh, structure like that or shape. Scrape it down a little bit here. And that's it. We're taking it back, putting it back to bed again, cover it up, lights out, and let it do its thing. Okay, pre-ferment again. Our pre-ferment, we made it. We looked at it once. We're going to look at it again. We're running three hours into our pre-ferment. We said we want the pre-ferment five, six hours. So let's see what this, um, this foolish is looking like. The first time it had a little bit of a domed appearance. As you can see, it's continued to uh, ferment. Lots of bubbles. And again, the structure, you can see the structure, you can see all those pores. You can see the strands of gluten that have developed. It's looking pretty good here. I'm going to scrape it away from the sides a little bit. I don't think we need that. And again, you see it's got, it's gathered some, uh, some structure to itself. It's got some shape to it. it it's, I can almost make it into a ball with the spatula, and, and that looks pretty good. And they say a truly a pulish is ready when it's at just at, when the dome is peaked and before it collapses. So uh, um, I never was that much of a specialist with pulish, but I think that this one's still got several hours to go, at least on our five to six hour timetable. It does, and and it's looking good. All right, we're making progress. This would be ready to mix now. This is you're really seeing the genesis of the bubbles. You know, we talked about saving the bubbles. Well, here they all are. And you saw them later in the, you'll see them later in the focaccia process where they're big, huge bubbles now in the dough. This is how it all begins. This is a pre-ferment, nice and mixed. You can see the wonderful texture, the thin film that we've created here. This is how you make great bread, great focaccia. And if you smell it too, you should be able to get all of the uh, aroma that's been developed there, both through the uh, bread drink, kombucha, and the yeast. Good enough to eat.